How are we doing everyone? Uh, I'm in the shop once again working on the Ranger. Uh, got our, after we've gotten our first kind of road test out of the way, um, I got a few issues that I want to kind of address or whatever. Um, I've actually uh, had this, uh, put on about 200 miles on this thing since our first, uh, the first road test on it. I uh, took it down uh, to a car show and brought it back. So it was roughly 150, 200 miles that I put on it. So. Uh, seemed to do okay, but there's a couple things I just wanted to address. Uh, one was I want to try and get that speedometer set up. Uh, I want to get that working. Uh, so get that cable drive uh, set up and so it's operating the stock speedometer. And then also I wanted to uh, hook up a uh, check engine light module, I guess. Um, so if the engine has any issues, then we have uh, the check engine light will actually come on on the dash and then I'll know. So. Let's get right into it and there might be a couple other things we'll get into too, so stick with me. So I decided to go and order uh, some more stuff from Dakota Digital. Uh, this is their STA 1000 uh, basically speedometer and tack uh, module. Uh, the only thing I'm going to be using it for is uh, for the check engine light. Uh, it's got a uh, one terminal here for hooking up to uh, just a basically a, an idiot light. So when the check engine light would come on, it would I could have a light um, working for me. So otherwise, uh, with the control pack, they don't have uh, anything for a check engine light, and obviously it'd be nice to have that uh, so you know if something's going wrong. So that's the only reason I, I bought this. Um, we'll get this mounted behind the glove box, kind of where some of that other Dakota Digital stuff is. Uh, basically, it just plugs into the OBD2 port, um, which I have a three-way splitter there, so I should have room for that. Uh, then it just plugs right in, and then you just need power and ground. And basically what this is supplying is a ground for the check engine light. So you just got to have uh, power to your light, and then this will supply the ground for that. So uh, if there's a problem, it just turns on. Now, the truck does not have uh, a tachometer in it. So I may use this as a tack, uh, for a tack, I should say, uh, later. I don't know where I'd mount it. Um, I don't necessarily want a tack. You know, big monster tack or something sitting off on the dash, but um, maybe if I can find something smaller, put it on the A pillar or something like that. But um, so it's just a matter of kind of getting this mounted uh, and uh, plugged in, and then getting power and ground to it, and then getting our little light hooked up. So that should be fairly easy. Um, but uh, we'll kind of show you how I'm doing that today. All right, you can see I have it uh, mounted behind the glove box here. Uh, so this GSS 3000 was for the uh, shifter indicator basically you know park neutral all that stuff which i showed in the previous video and then uh, this is where the sta 1000 is here for the tack and speedometer if you want to use it otherwise i'm just using it for the uh, uh, check engine light so basically i'm just going to rob ignition power and ground off of this one just make a nice little loop there i just have to run my check engine light wire to here and then uh, plug in the obd2 port right here so uh, like I said, if I ever wanted to add a, a tachometer to this thing, uh, I could just tie into it here, uh, be close. But as you can kind of see, I just, I don't know where I'd necessarily mount the tack. You know, I could mount it right here in the corner um, or up on top of the dash, which I wouldn't want to do, or put it on the A pillar. But for now, we're not going to run one. Uh, like I said, we'll maybe add that later. So we'll get those wires run, out, run over to it and uh, for the most part. We should be good to go. All right, there we go. Got everything wired up uh, that, I, that I need to for the check engine light. I um, actually uh, disconnected the mass airflow sensor uh, just to test it, and everything's tested out fine. It's it's working. Uh, plugged it back in. Uh, check engine light went out, so we should be good to go there. So I've been learning a lot of new things about my uh, setup here, uh, the Ranger and the control pack and the Coyote motor and all that stuff. Um, if you remember from some of my previous videos. I had ordered the uh, cable driven uh, adapter uh, to read off the OBD2 port and then so it would run my mechanical cable driven speedometer, the factory speedometer. Um, kind of had played around with that trying to get that cable driven adapter to work uh, and I had sent the, the box back to Dakota Digital uh, to see if, to make sure it was updated with the latest information. Uh, basically, we weren't getting a signal from the control pack to run that thing off the OBD2 port. Uh, turns out that 
there really isn't going to be a signal because from what I understand is that from 2015 and newer uh, Ford runs the uh, wheel speed or the speedometer off the wheel speed sensors. Well that's tied in, the, in with the ABS and all that stuff so obviously I'm not going to have wheel speed sensors on this truck. I don't plan on putting any on so that rules that out. So basically that's just going to nix that idea of running off the OBD2 port. Um, but there is another way. Um, so I went and ordered Dakota, Dakota Digital's magnetic pickup coil. Um, so basically what this does is you'll take this bracket, mount it underneath, uh, and then mount the magnet on there, and it'll read off the drive shaft. Um, there's a little pack here of four magnets that basically you put um, on the drive shaft at 90 degree intervals around the drive shaft. Um, and the magnet will read that and then this will be able to hook up to that same cable driven uh, adapter that I have. So basically that cable driven adapter you either read it off of uh, a vehicle speed signal uh, which that's where these two wires would go to or you read it off of the CAN bus, the OBD2 port. Um, so I, I'm not going to be using the CAN bus so I'll be able to just tie these into those wires and hopefully that'll work now in my mechanical speed uh, speedometer will work so we're gonna try and get this wired up here and I'll show you kind of what I'm thinking I don't know if I'm gonna put them right on the drive shaft I might put them on the yoke uh, of the transmission output shaft um, because it's got it's kind of a four bolt pattern in the back and uh, they might be able to put those magnets right on there versus right on the drive shaft all right hopefully you can see this okay but um, this is where I'm hoping to put the magnets uh, you can kind of see I actually have them mounted on there already so let's see, right there is a magnet, turn to this side there's a small magnet and it just so happens that yeah it's a four bolt flange here, I'll try and get on the other side here so you can see it a little better. So you're supposed to uh, basically put them on there, put the zip tie on there to keep them in place um, and depending on how tight that zip tie will get. Um, you can also epoxy them too or glue them on which I'm gonna do that uh, I want to get this kind of set up here first and I'll just put a little epoxy in the kind of on each side um, but uh, I have it fairly tight they shouldn't come off of there once I get them epoxied and stuff um, but they're evenly spaced that way um, otherwise you're supposed to put them you know somewhere let me see, get on the other side here somewhere here or back here, you're not supposed to go more than 12 inches past the U-joint back um, and uh, basically you can just mount them at a 90 degree around here or around here and do the same thing, you zip tie it or you glue them on or they basically want you to do both so um, but I think that'll work this way it shouldn't have any flexing, you know if they're on the drive shaft you'll have a little bit of uh, articulation with the suspension going up and down the rear but uh, this way it should be pretty solid and uh, shouldn't have any really movement or loss of signal hopefully. Um, what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I took the bracket and I cut it down pretty small. Uh, there's, you're supposed to mount it kind of on the floor and hang it down uh, so it's on the drive shaft but being I'm putting it right there I'm going to go off this rear transmission bracket and I'm probably going to mount it just like this and that way it's you know pretty much lined up with the uh, magnets as they come around uh, you're supposed to have three quarters of a gap uh, kind of between there I'm guessing I can go a little bit tighter than that and you know, I'll try and keep uh, at least a half inch just so if there's any flexing it doesn't hit it when it's going around or you know anything that would bump the zip tie would uh, break that right off or um, make the magnets fly off but basically I think that'll work. I'll get it bolted on here like this and uh, adjust that just perfectly and uh, hopefully that'll work and then we'll have to run the wires to the inside and hook that up to our cable adapter box. So after talking with Dakota Digital and doing some testing uh, basically for some reason that control box is just not spinning the, the cable, the speedometer cable itself um, so I don't know if it's something I have I'm not doing right or if there's something going on it just says cable lock it's basically telling it that 
some the cable itself is stuck even though it's seeing a signal from down there um, I, you know we're getting a reading from the the magnets down in the drive shaft but for whatever reason it's not spinning it so I'm gonna have to get that sent off get that sent off to Dakota Digital see if they can do anything with it uh, and then just wait and see what they say and then when it gets back we can give it a shot so hopefully hopefully that'll take care of it you know and uh, we can get that speedometer working well here's what the inside of this uh, speedometer adapter looks like um, I got it back now from Dakota Digital uh, after they uh, kind of went through it and tested it uh, it's working now that I got it hooked up uh, I can see it spinning uh, that's why I got the cover off I wanted to make sure that I could see it spinning in there it's just a little o-ring basically in there that runs from the motor to it but uh, yeah I don't know if I must have had something uh, not set right in there uh, that I was getting that cable lock code because it seems to be working fine now and when they tested it everything tested fine so we will put this all back together and test it out once the cable is actually hooked up to it got it figured out now it's working I just had to go into the phone app here and hit it was going in reverse see if I switch that to forward it stops if I put it on reverse it starts working so this phone app works pretty good now we just have to take it on the road and make sure it's calibrated pretty close all right just got back from a little road test uh, testing out the speedometer and making sure it's accurate uh, thing works great now at low speed and high speed uh, the thing is accurate uh, kind of went off of my my radio's got a GPS uh, on it so I kind of went off that and that's fairly pretty accurate too so I was just going off of that um, but it was pretty uh, I'll show you here uh, once I can get it open so this is the app that uh, Dakota Digital has for the uh, speedometer adapter uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, app um, so basically once I had it uh, going here actually working uh, spinning the cable and everything was working down there which originally I think it was just that it was on the wrong uh, RPM or not RPM but uh, just the wrong setup um, let me see if I can get into there and uh, the PPM they call it pulses per mile uh, was set up at uh, probably the wrong one now it's set at 8000 but uh, basically you go into here and I'll show you the input and direction so it lets you know if you want uh, the signal or the CAN bus on top which we're on the VSS signal and that's what I had to switch uh, forward to reverse to get the uh, cable to, to actually work once it was running and back hooked back up um, but once I was on the road uh, I just went into this calculation or calculated adjust and I just have this needle up needle down speed and I just had to adjust that until it met uh, when I first started driving it was way high on the speedometer so I had to back it down quite a bit um, and I'm guessing it depends on what gear ratio you have in the rear end and everything but um, worked pretty good so I'm happy with it uh, it's just nice to have all those little things done and uh, yeah with the speedometer working now I don't have to necessarily pay attention to the radio or you know watch the signs on the side of the road so it's it seems it doesn't seem to be a delay or anything um, I love it so far so like I said it's just nice to have those little things done out of the way and basically on to the next thing so all right now that I got the speedometer working uh, my next battle is I'm trying to figure out what I got to do or how I want to make the uh, PCV system on this thing so from when I installed this motor uh, I just had the factory uh, tube that ran from this uh, side right to the intake here this side didn't have anything on it uh, because this one is supposed to run to the intake pipe itself which I'm not going to run it to here I'll leave that alone um, but I wanted to put a catch can on here uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to run one on each side 
Uh, from what I'm seeing and what I've, I've heard uh, is that this they consider the dirty side. Uh, you get a lot more oil out of this side for some reason. Uh, I haven't seen anything come out of this side yet. Um, mostly I've just had it capped kind of when it's sitting when I drive it I pull that cap off there um, and I haven't seen really any oil or anything come out of there so it's kind of weird that I don't get anything but this one I want to run right to this intake pipe here. Right now I just have a cap so I don't have a vacuum leak. Um, and then this side I'm going to put a catch can on it. Um, and down the road if I want to put one on that side I can but I'm just trying to keep it as clean as possible under here. So um, they do make kits for the F-150 motor and uh, for the Mustang too I guess you could fit one on here. Um, but I wasn't sure where I was going to mount it. Uh, originally thinking I was going to mount it up on the firewall there and then just run both lines straight back. You know, maybe make some custom lines or something or find one that's close and I can just kind of make it fit. Um, what I ended up doing is I, I got the kit from j &L Oil Company, Oil Separator Company. Uh, right now I kind of have it apart, but uh, this one is made for the, let's see, uh, newer Mustangs like the S550s. Uh, also, I think this fits on a 2013-2014 Boss 302. Um, so what it's supposed to do is this one kind of goes here like that. The other one obviously on this side. And this thing is just supposed to clip on here onto those and hang here. So there is no bracket or anything that comes with it. Um, and I thought maybe that would fit in here because it was real close. I wasn't sure if it was going to hit the pipe here or hit the uh, top radiator hose here. So I thought, well, I'll buy that kit, and it came with basically the fittings that I needed anyway to snap on here, um, you know, like the factory would. So I went and did it, but it's not going to, it basically hits, so it's not going to work. Um, so I'm going to make some custom brackets and hoses and stuff, and uh, that's why I have everything apart right now. Uh, this one was actually, I turned that up because the way I, I think I'm going to mount it, it's going to work. Um, they do make brackets. Uh, with other kits this one like I said doesn't come with a bracket um, but at least the holes are here so I can make one um, I just basically uh, took these little clamps off the hose pulled that off of there and then each one had uh, you know the factory clip-ons here or connections there uh, basically you just warm it up with a little torch uh, you don't want to you know melt it you just want to get it soft um, and then it'll pull right out and you can reuse these um, I was hoping that I could reuse some of these uh, factory or these pipes they sent with. Uh, these aren't long enough, um, but I did have some other ones here that I kind of had. This was the original one on that came with the engine that I bought. Um, I tried to straighten it out a little bit, uh, kind of warm it up and see if I could straighten it and mold it. Uh, you can, but it just wants to kind of spring back to the way it was. So I wasn't having great luck with it. Um, my other option is to buy a kind of more of a straight pipe. I think the Mustang one has a straighter hose on it. I can't remember which side it was on. Um, but you could try that and you know try and get it to bend. But what I'm finding so far is kind of been messing around is I have some swing pipe. If you know what swing pipe is, it's for irrigation systems, you know, sprinklers. Um, it's a little bit thicker walled than like some of this stuff is. This is a little bit thinner. Um, but it's way more formable, you know, for the most part it comes in a big spool, uh, so it's got a slight curve to it. Well, I can show you another piece here, but so, you know, it's going to naturally be somewhat of a circle there. Um, but when you warm it up, you can straighten it out pretty good and it doesn't kink really. I mean, it will if you get it hot enough, um, but uh, I'm finding it a lot easier to form it the way I want it. And it's the same size, you know, basically once you warm it up, it'll slide right on there. Uh, it's just half inch. The only problem is it's got this blue stripe on here, um, so you can either paint it or I tried to kind of scratch it off there and see if I can get it off there. It's not working real well, um, but uh, I'm sure you can get it off somehow. But what I'm doing is I'm just going to keep it at the bottom so you don't even see it at all. So I just got to shape it so it, it doesn't twist or anything and you don't see it. So we'll just keep it to the bottom, but that seems to be what I'm, you know, the go-to, I guess, for making these custom lines here. So. Um, and you could go with rubber hoses. Uh, a lot of their kits, you know, from JNL, do have the rubber hoses that would just come off of here. Um, I don't. I, I think I like the look of the, the plastic ones a little bit better. Um, and then they're just more. They're not as bulky. 
So I kind of wanted the, the thinner ones like this and I thought it would just be better. So that's what I'm going with the swing pipe, I guess. I got plenty of it from just around the house here when I put in uh, irrigation in the yard. So uh, we'll use that, we'll make them up. Um, I'm also gonna mount, grab the can here. Sorry for all the back and forth, but. So I still had thought about maybe running the lines back here, but it's just longer lines to run. It's, you know, I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible, as clean as possible. Um, I also, you know, have the power steering reservoir here that I don't necessarily want it in the way of this if I was to mount it right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually there's the two bolts here, right down on the valve cover here, one here, one here. So I'm going to make a small bracket right there. And basically I'm going to try and mount it right there uh, and then just run the hoses to it. I don't think that'll be too gaudy or look terrible. Um, it'll be easy to access the can and unscrew it. So, and you can see I already kind of have the one line started to make up here. You got the blue line kind of at the bottom and uh, it should sneak in here. I'll get it underneath the uh, hoses here, but get that clipped on. Just kind of clears the head here and kind of sneaks between the valve cover here and the hose and then right about where my thumb is here I'll have to bend that up a little bit and that'll go into the side of the can here but before I can kind of figure out where I'm, I need to bend that I'm going to need to make a bracket so this is uh, kind of start of the brackets here there's my can so it'll be basically facing, if we're standing on the passenger side, it'll be faced like that. I'm going to put make that as a bracket, and that's just going to be straight down like that. And then this part will bolt to the uh, valve cover, and it's basically going to come up like that. I got some other pieces to fill in there, but just had to make two pieces here. And uh, so I can lay it out on, a, on some aluminum is what I'll make it out of. And I'll fill in this area here, and this is going to be cut out here. But uh, this way I can lay it flat, cut my pattern out, and then I can bend it from there. But uh, I think that'll work. We'll get into making this uh, next here and uh, see if it'll come out the way I want it to. And then we can make the hoses. And I think that'll be uh, fairly easy to do. So far this one went pretty quick making that. Uh, so we'll get that. The other one I think I'm going to run from here and uh, just kind of down, we'll come straight over and then down into the can. And then the other one, uh, I'll just run off of here and that's gonna go right to that hose there too. So I do have extra uh, connectors here, elbows. Um, all I, have to, I only need one and that these just came off of the factory pipe that I showed you earlier, this one. Like I said, just warm them up a little bit with a heat gun or small torch or something like that. And uh, they'll slide right out of there. So. Um, and then we should have that all tied up together. So, well, there's the bracket in, a, in all its glory. Uh, it didn't take me too long to get that made up there, but that should uh, fit in here pretty nice. Get that bolted on and get that mounted up. Then we can finish up making the lines. That'll just bolt right to the top there, like that. So that's what it'll look like when it's all mounted. Uh, I'm going to paint that bracket black once I'm all done here, but um, I'm just trying to figure out where the hose is going to be cut. And you can kind of see it here. This is the hose. Kind of got it marked there in the, just above my thumb where I'm going to bend it uh, and then slide it on the nipple there, but I'll have to take this back off real quick. I'll leave the bracket on, but take that off real quick so I can kind of bend it right where I need to, just underneath the bracket. Um, and then cut it and we'll get that one on and then we can mock up this this line here to the, the other port. All right, I'll just show you real quick here. Put a little heat to this thing. Let's see if we can get this put on there.
here we go. It should be in the spot that I need it to be. And you shouldn't really have to put a clamp or anything on here. Once that cools off, uh, that should stay where it needs to be, but I'm going to try and just tweak this a little bit, I think, though. You can kind of tell when it gets to that right temperature because uh, the outside of it gets, you can start to see it get a little shiny um, or change kind of color from a somewhat of a satin color to it, almost to a gloss. And then that's usually when it's kind of starting to melt a little bit, but I think that should work. We'll try it on the truck next year. So for the second one, I'm going to use a little welding rod uh, just to kind of make the shape that I want. Kind of sit in, see if I can do this with all these hoses in the way, but it's going to kind of run like that. It's going to be kind of a sharp 90 right before it goes into there, but I think we'll be okay. Keep that down as close to the canister as we can. I just don't want it sticking up too high, but we'll get it figured out. So at least we got the shape and it'll be something close to that. All right, second line is all bent up. And that's what it's basically going to look like when it gets in there. I still have to paint the bracket, like I said. But uh, I think it turned out pretty good. I'll show you here in a second what it looks like when it's mounted. Uh, but the only real chance of seeing this blue line is when it's installed. As if you're kind of looking down in there, you can see that. I might put a little paint on there. Otherwise, the blue lines are underneath and you're not really going to see it. Unless you really stick your head in there or looking from underneath the truck. But uh, I think that looks pretty good. Here we go, I just got to put a couple bolts in there yet. Uh, like I said, paint the bracket. Those is clear everything. I think they're routed nice and clean. Uh, one reason I went forward with the second line here, right above the uh, uh, cap there, is uh, I didn't want to necessarily covering up the, the orange uh, coil covers that I have on there. So that's why I'm trying to say uh, keep it clean. Um, just to kind of hide all that stuff. Um, but I think it turned out okay. And the other one just routes in there. The first line here is pretty tight and snug up against the motor, but there is clearance. And it shouldn't vibrate once that's bolted down. Um, even if there is, it's, it's a lot thicker uh, pipe than that factory stuff. So I think that turned out great. The only thing we have to do now is to wrap up this other side. I'll make this one. Uh, this one should be pretty easy. Got a, an elbow right there uh, from the original line. And it's just a matter of kind of running it right over into this port here. So that should be fairly easy. Um, you could put, you know, clamps on these ports, but I'm just going to slide it on there. And it should seal up nice and tight. So we'll make that and then we'll probably end, up end the video right after that. There we go. All finished up. Got my covers back on. Uh, lines are all made. I think it turned out pretty good. So, it's just nice to uh, have those little things done. You know, sometimes those are just as rewarding as having the big items taken care of. Um, but, uh, yeah, one more thing off the list. So, until next time, guys, I appreciate you watching. Take care.